Welcome back Primarchs. I'm happy to make another video here. Uh, this video is to do with how and how to build your army to win. Now again, the things I'm going to talk about here before I go on, I'm going to say that I am a competitive channel, so don't take offense to anything I say. I'm not telling you what to buy, I'm not telling you what uh, things you can't win with, because you still might win. I'm telling you, I've done a ton of math hammer, I have play tested the crap out of this book, and I'm telling you units in the book that you want to take, uh, pros and cons about them, but the main reasons of why you want to take them over other units. So this is a very, very important uh, video that I really want to emphasize out there, that if you watch this, this can save you a lot of money about wasting money at you know stores buying things that you'll say later on, like, why did I buy that? Or this doesn't do that, or this doesn't do that. It all comes down to it. If you're gonna play Tau, or if you are a Tau player, and you don't even know exactly know Maybe you're not winning, maybe you're uh, having difficulties with it, and you're just thinking it's not there. But I'm telling you, Tau is there. And the things I'm gonna tell you may seem very generic, but they gotta be used to get that consistent win. And usually playing this list is not a maker of friends, which means you'll literally see, and I have some already some of my members that have uh, talked to me about playing this after, and competitively, obviously, and how mad their opponents get playing these lists because it's such a hammering list that it's it's effective, I'm not gonna lie. And it, after watching this video, if you wanted to go this way or even play test this and see the difference, you'll be like, wow, I see what you're saying, Joe. So without further ado, let's talk. Now this is not a codex review, this is a unit review of what to buy if you're me, or if you're one of my subscribers, I would tell you, or one of my patrons, I would tell you what to get. So I'm gonna take advantage and tell everyone what I would do. So first of all, my first commander out of the hop would be Commander Shadow Sun. The Tau set by far is the best set out there. Overall, you're gonna use it. And when it comes down to it, there is some decent stratagems and there is some decent commanders in the other ones, but it comes down to it mainly, you can use Overwatch nine out of 10 games. Nine out of 10 games, that will be a factor, if not 10 out of 10, but we'll say nine out of 10 to be fair, because there will be some times where you're just playing a, a shooting army and they're not gonna charge you that often. So, but most games, you're gonna have something try to charge you at some point. And charging Tau with five plus is dangerous. Uh, but the main purpose I take Tau is because I can only take Shadow Sun because He's in the Tau Empire. He has to be taken as a Tau Empire set. And he's, she, sorry, she is the best by all commander end. End of the sentence. There's just no if, ands, or buts. Now, with that being said, I'm going to do the pros and cons. Her pros are, yes, she's got great stats. She's got good abilities. Um, she has the best ability of them all is uh, the genius of Kaon. She can do it twice. She can do... Uh, Kaon uh, or Maka, she's already declared it, which is insane. They get two big abilities. So you can do Kaon fire twice is just unbelievable. Having your guys able to fire twice. I can't say hitting on fours sucks. It's a 50% chance. But hitting on fours with a reroll, we're in a new world of math. So Commander Shadow Sun, as two turns you can do that. Two turns your little bubble can unload everything all over them. That sounds really bad, but you know what I mean. So skipping to the next. Uh, if you're going to pick a commander, because you want to have a generic commander, Cold Star Commander at this time is where it's at. The Cold Star Commander can advance and move stupid far, like stupid far over 40 inches. Okay, so it's allowed to move and add, uh, where is it here? Do, 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 do. Sorry, it's a little bit of halo there. You can add 20 to its uh, movement, and has, so it has a base move of 20, 20 inches. You can add 20, giving you 40, and you're allowed to advance, you know, if you wish to add, because you're going to be doing their 20, which let's say you get average of 3 is 43, but 41 guaranteed, and if you use Monka, it counts as not moving, which means you can move 40 inches plus shoot with no pelling, hitting on twos still. Very, very nasty. Now, the reason and the pros of these guys, obviously, and then I shouldn't really say the con of the... Uh, the only con to Shadow Sun is she's pretty much going to be used two rounds. It's 160 points around there that she's going to just sit there and give buffs. It's still worth it, and you could take a commander, but no matter what, you're going to pay points for a commander. The Cold Star commander, there's still a little bit more points than her, but they have two more guns. She only has two fusion guns, but it balances out. So anyways, that was a flaw of her. The flaw of these ones, the, the Cold Star commanders, 
once they charge up the board, even with, they can't, no drones can keep up with them. And you're not going to be able to deep strike your drones close enough to her usually because this, these commanders are going to get in close so they can use the melter rule, the fusion rule, where they have to roll two dice for their wound tables because you don't want to roll a one. You'd rather roll a six and a one and keep that six. So after the commander charges up there, he's pretty much going to be toast, which means you're going to give away about 170 points. You can get away around this by running a cold star commander with a different set of guns, maybe a little longer range, and then you can deep strike your drones there. But nothing says loving like open fusion guns on their face. I don't know, it just seems more uh, happy to me. Ah, next. Ethereals, basic ethereals. These guys are going to keep your drones and your crew, or even anything else that might be something you don't want to lose, from running. These are 45 point HQ, and when it comes down to it, and you got to fill a battalion, and you need, or a brigade like I run, um, you got to fill some HQ slots, and you don't want to spend too many points because you're only allowed one commander per. I only run one commander, that's all I do now. Going from when it first came out, the code, uh, index came out, and I was running seven commanders, I'm down to one commander. Shadow Sun is all I need now, I don't need it anymore. Uh, I would like to have some more sometimes, but when you throw a brigade in, I'm telling you your points are gone fast. So anyways, an ethereal is so beneficial for two reasons. Three reasons, actually. We'll say that, first of all, a six plus fuel and pain isn't that bad. It really isn't. It's just an odds of saving against those stupid mortal wounds you have a chance of saving. Uh, also, that everything around the six inch bubble gets um, to use their ethereal leadership, which is leadership nine. Which means your drones a leadership six, which if you lost two drones, they could run away with two of them. That, that's horrible. This will keep your drones from running. This will keep your broadsides from running or whatever else you got there. They won't run. Uh, also, if you do Monka, you're allowed to re-roll your uh, advance roll, which is sometimes nice if you roll a one. And at least maybe you can roll a two the second time. But it's still a beneficial. The, the flaw of the ethereal, low wounds, so very easy to lose to sniper bait. Uh, and it doesn't really do much. There's no combat effectiveness really to this character. So it's just going to sit there and be 45 points of buffing. So now you have that and you have Shadow Sun. You're pretty much tying up 200 points of just buffs. But, I mean, the buffs balance out. Cadre Fireblade. Uh, this is always uh, back and forth. Is Cadre or Dark Strider? Dark Strider, if you're running Tau Step, Dark Strider is 10 times better. 10 times. If you don't want to run the Tau Empire because you're set on your own way, or maybe you want to run Sarcia because it's nice to be the role, you can't take Dark Strider. So, Cadre Fireblade is good for that bonus. Where Dark Strider's flaw is he can't be taken outside of the Tau set. What do these guys do? For one, Cadre Fireblade uh, has a volley rule, which means you can add another dice to shooting when the guys are going, which is it's pretty cool. It's an extra shot. So anything in half range, and pulse, we all know pulse weapons are pretty far apart, pulse rifles and stuff. To get an extra six inches is a big deal uh, if you have certain uh, things to get bonuses. So that's not bad. It's, and it's, he's cheap. It's like 40-some points. Really cheap. Dark Strider, same basic points. I think he's about two more points over. Uh, his movement's great. Seven-inch move. Ballistic kill. He's got both marker light guys. Keep in mind. So you got a cheap hitting on two marker light, which is the main factor. But the reason you're mainly taking uh, Dark Strider over because he can add, this is how I run them. So I'll use a unit of Fire Warriors. If I have a big target out there, maybe it's something like the opponent's running, a uh, Forge World model or Mortarian, Magnus. I'll light them up with like five or ten uh, Fire Warriors, whatever I take at that time, usually five. And I'll add plus one to wound, which means I'm going to hit, I'm going to get my rerolls because of the KM, which means I'm probably going to get at least four hits if I'm running five guys. Chances are I'm going to get a wound because I only need four to wound them. If I get one wound through, I unload with focus fire and everything else that fires me is plus one wound. So Dark Shredder is a good buff on that. He can only buff um, certain units, which is... I'm pretty sure it just says... Uh, or it does say infantry. I'm not sure I checked that the other day. He had one to wound to tower step infantry, which is really cool because I had a situation come up there where I had to check it. And I had uh, something come in and Shadow Sun has the infantry rule, so... I got my fusion guns and he had a toughness eight thing when I needed, you know, eight fours to wound it, I was able to knock it down to threes. If it would have been a toughness seven, I could have wounded on twos, which is pretty badass when you think about it. So that's a good bonus even for having, uh, the commanders don't have the infantry rule. So only, long strike only has a three plus save. Not long strike, sorry, um, shadow sun. So normally you can't do with a commander. I just, 
They have their battle suit characters, jetpack, fly commander. None of them have character role. You can do the stealth suits, but that's about it. Long strike. A lot of people ask me about long strike all the time. On paper, I shouldn't say it, but I gotta say it. Like communism, it sounds good on paper, but I had to say it. Um, long strike sounds great on paper. He unfortunately he hits really good, but he's so easy to kill. You can't give him any drone support. You can't protect him one way. He's just going to go down very easily. And it's unfortunate because he does have a cool boss. You could take him with three other hammerheads. That's a ton of points, but you could. That could be your three heavy support choices. But once long strike's done, you've lost a lot of your abilities. You're hitting on threes from there. And if you move, you're hitting on fours. And there's just not enough dice on hammerheads. Just not enough dice. I've tried. Some of my videos, I've thrown in a devilfish or a hammerhead. I just, they just don't do it. So not going to take him. That's, I just wanted to touch base on him because a lot of people ask. Breachers. Okay. Breachers are a double-edged sword. They're awesome. They have an awesome close range weapon. If you're within their weapons range, which is effectively close range at 5 inches, Assault 2, Strength 6, AP 2, 1 damage. What these guys are designed to do is to protect you from deep strikers or flanking things that are trying to get in towards an objective. You need to get these guys tucked in somewhere where they can't be seen and to protect. And this is the problem. They can't deep strike, and you don't want to pay the points to throw them in a uh, devilfish because it's just too many points. They're just going to be easily shot down. There's only five models that are easy to kill. But if you can tuck them in somewhere where they can't be seen, which is possible in ITC tournaments, they are nice to have. The reason I take strike teams over breacher teams is because I'm able to use them and shoot and at least get a couple kills with them rather than the breachers are only more of a deterrent, which is still nice to have that deterrent. Firewares have a long range and they're always good to have. So either one of those aren't going to hurt your feelings. So you can run breachers or strike teams. Both of them are effective. They're the key components. But my key troop that I run three squads of these in every unit, like two is my minimum. I will not go under is crew squads. Crew squads, I cannot, I've, a whole bunch of videos you've watched, I've been doing it forever. Crew are where it's at. Crew are cheap, they're five points a model, you get 10 of them. They're an aerial denial unit. You wanna aerial deny your opponent from deep striking, it's so important. Not to mention, if you give them, a, um, they have the ability to stop uh, guys coming in and close combat on you because you can do them as a bubble. They have, they still kill killing potential and they still have a strike four gun. You can give them the six plus field of pain if you're close enough to get ethereal. They're just so good, but I mainly use them just for air to now. They're so good. Got to take those guys. Stealth battle suits are also another uh, very, very, very effective unit. You're not going to take these guys to their awesome killing potential, but they do have some. You're going to take these guys for their area denial. I tried running smaller squads. I'm finally up now to running five-man squads. I find five is the effective number, four with the normal uh, burst cannons and one with the fusion. I'm not getting... I, I use these guys as area denial, obviously. They can get up, infiltrate the board, and they can take key things like the relic or objectives that you know your opponent's going to go for and then drop something on. The camouflage shields adds minus one to be hit in close combat and in shooting, which means any army that hits on four is going to hit on fives. It's pretty effective. It's got to be used. So stealth teams, don't be afraid to buy some of those. They're very effective. Crisis suits, I have tried them and I, I'm i at the impasse right now. They have an effective thing, but there's too many things. I've math hammered it out. You can take three crisis suits with the uh, dispersed with iron rifle, whatever it's called, iron, uh, cy cyclonic iron, iron rifle. You get three of them with three of those, you get a lot of shot potential, 27 shots, but it's gonna cost more points than a Riptide. They have, and a Riptide has way more survivability than these guys. So when it comes down to math, and I have 18 shots with a burst cannon and eight shots with a smart missile, I'm choosing the Riptide over these, just as point cost wise. Unfortunately, hopefully they can uh, reduce the point cost of these guys. They're just not worth taking at this current time. So I'm passing, if you're gonna buy them, don't buy them at this current time, there's just too many points. Uh, market lights, everyone asks, how do you run your army? I only run like four to five market lights in my army, period. That's all I need. How do I keep them alive? They're all characters. I take either Dark Strider, Cadre, or Fire Marksman. Fire Marksmen are amazing. They're a stupid cheap commander. We're talking like 25 points 
for our character rule, which means you can put them behind things. Yes, they could be targeted by snipers, but who cares? I mean, you got enough. all you need to do is get one marker that I hit to get your rerolls. If you want to fire your seeker missiles, oh look, I hit once. I'll use my stratagem. We're at a D3. Now I have worst case scenario too. Oh look, my seeker missiles are firing. Why waste your time on getting five hits for them? Listen, you're wasting shots. If I'm shooting that many shots, I could have been killing models. It's just not worth it. So far sight marksman. Get them. If you, now these are pain in the butt to get, so conversion purposes, you can use guys with binoculars, you can use whatever you want. It comes down to it, you put them on a bigger base, you got a Farsight Marksman. Um, Pathfinders, like I said, I, I'm not, some people are trying to run Pathfinders, I'm not against them. You can use these guys as a quick strike force to kind of start taking objectives. I like to usually run a more defensive strategy. I'll spend the first two turns gunning, and then the third turn, I move up. I don't like to leave my little defensive hub until I've done enough strike damage. Uh, Pathfinders takes away my strike damage potential by shooting, and I don't have as much. So I, I'm still on the fence of those. Uh, Riptide Battle Suits. Should you run more than one? I don't think so. Two is still nice. But you can't give that stratagem to get the bonus where you get the plus. And they're just going to target the other Riptide. If you have that one that has a 3 plus invulnerable save and a 2 plus armor save, they really hate shooting it. He's got 14 wounds and he can unload a lot of firepower. Still hitting on 4s sucks. It's garbage. Even if you're rerolling 1s because of the marker light. But if you keep him for that 2 turns with the k -on abilities, you'd be amazed how much damage this guy can do. And if you don't run broadsides because you don't want to have the points, maybe you're running a smaller tournament. Use a command and control node, and now that he gets to reroll his wounds. So he's rerolling his hits, rerolling his wounds. He's nasty. What do you take on him? You take the advanced targeting system, so you have a minus one AP, so you have smart missiles doing minus one, and your burst can is now doing minus two, which is awesome. You also have the advantage to take a two point velocity tracker. Everything in this freaking edition has fly keyword. Everything jump troops, uh, bikes, uh, monstrous creatures flying. There's uh, wave serpents, the list goes on and on and on. Jump pack character, I don't even know if I said that, but it goes on. If you take that, he now if he targets that unit, he has plus one ballistic skills. So now I'm hitting on threes with my Riptide. How can you go wrong? Threes re-rolling, it just gets better. So, uh, yeah. Shield drones, shield drones, shield drones, shield drones. If you're running drones, unfortunately, shield drones are now replacing the market. Shield drones have got the bonus or 10 point model. Hopefully they don't change that in the next FAQ. But 10 points, um, they get a four plus invulnerable save and a five plus funeral pain. How the five plus funeral pain works, if I take a last cannon and I intercept my drone, he flies out. They don't get to roll their damage. He just intercepts it. They take He takes one mortal wound, which he can make a five plus save and sometimes soak that last cannon hit, which is amazing for 10 points. How many of these do you run? I run anywhere from 15 to 20 of these in my list. Yes, you're losing your fire potential, but I can protect my broadsides, my commanders, my crises when I'm running, um, everything, riptides, stealth suits, the list goes on. And it really pisses your opponents off when they waste a good gun on a shield drone. And I even add the sound effects to even by like, you, my shield absorb that. Um, broadside battle suits are the ace in the hole. They're the key foundation of Tau firepower. Stupid Tau firepower. 48 shots plus the three secret missiles is 51 for one round shots, 48 for the rest. Unloading, if you get the reroll hits, and you get the reroll wounds with 48 shots and the three seeker missiles adding on to that. It's insane. Opponents are going to try to drop these guys. They're going to try to, but your shield drones are just going to be flying everywhere, intercepting shots, and it's going to be beautiful. And now with my brigade and the new rule, I get 15 command points. I'll, I'm not afraid to throw a dice. If I roll a one for an intercept, I'll roll it again. Um, I get command points to waste. Plus, you take the the one um, relic where you get every time you spend one you, on a six you get one back and your opponent gets one back with rolling 15 i'm going to roll at least two sixes i'm going to get two free command points and he's going to give me at least two thank you that's four free command points please come again uh yeah so broadside battle suits only one way to run them high yield missiles smart missiles end of story Advanced targeting system is an option. I run the three-man squad with advanced targeting systems because I want to have the ballistic skill hammering. I want to drop things fast. So high yield missiles doing AP2 is a big deal. And smart missiles doing minus one with rerolling wounds is a big deal too. And now, how did I get my brigade? 
by taking, I'm not going to take hammerheads or other types of, I'm going to take another broadside. Just a one-man squad broadside. And another one-man broadside squad. These guys will be armed with the same kit, except instead of the ATS, they're going to be running the velocity trackers. Velocity trackers, these means any flyer on the board or any thing with a keyword fly is going to be hit on a three. And they're going to unload on him. Just one guy, 16 shots. With Kaon, re-rolling. Plus, he can be defended by my little drones that are more than happy to take a shot in the face. Uh, yeah. Next is pretty much the end of the story. Now, that's not very many models, and that's not very, very thing. But if you buy any of those things, you will have a key to victory. Five broadsides is the heavy support choice of the day. You can afford it. It's not that expensive. It's We're looking at four... <laughs> A little under 700 points, I think, around. It's it's worth it. End of the day, you'll be amazed at the firepower. This is 140 points compared to a hammerhead, which is about 170 with the different kit. Guaranteed shots. If you take the ion gun on the the uh, hammerhead, you've got a random chance of shots. Anyways, you can't win. Plus, if they charge you, just think, if some army is brave enough to charge you and you have all your broadsides still up, you got... Like a hundred shots just from broadsides alone pretty much just bam not quite a hundred I'm gonna add in a little bit there, but still you got 32 plus your 48. It's pretty close We'll round it up Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be more videos to come um, Thanks again guys, please subscribe